many of you own cryptocurrency? Normally when I ask groups of bankers, they, some people, I say, it's not illegal. You do know that, right? And when I speak to bankers and I say to them, how many of you are even interested? And one or two put up, this is the future of money. I'm not saying it's Bitcoin. I'm not saying it's this or that. Alt this is the future of money. At least principally, at least philosophically. And once these principles hit, these principles of open and exponential, you, there's no going back. Often when we talk about automation and the fourth industrial revolution, we think about blue collar jobs and the impact of blue collar jobs and how they might be affected by robotics. I think that's a very short term view. New truths are defining everything. There is actually, I mean, you know, not only is Trump president, he may win a second term, right? How many of you have got children who are studying at, uh, in higher education at the moment? How many of you have got children in school? Those of you who have got children studying, how many of you are delighted with the way they're being prepared for the workforce? Everybody always talks about the fact that it's fine, robotics and AI is going to take out the routine, the rules, the repetitive-based work, and it can't do empathy and it can't do human creativity. Last night I watched a video of, a, of an AI painting making art, and it made utterly beautiful art because it analyzed patterns of how people appreciate art and what we like, and then according to those patterns it made art, and obviously one plus one equals two, so the art it produced to us is beautiful. The empathy factor, the, oh, don't worry, what we're going to be left to do is all the creative human stuff, I think is very much up for grabs. Very much up for grabs. And when we start talking about the fact that right now in Shanghai there are restaurants that are entirely robotized, in other words, back office or kitchen, Flippy the robot, and literally he is called Flippy, is making perfect hamburgers for McDonald's in Europe right now. They have really opened up McDonald's stores that are automated. But then the front of the house in this particular Shanghai restaurant has no human beings, it's completely automated. So on your phone you choose your selection of food and a robot brings it out on a conveyor belt and so on and so on, clears it away for you. Some people that I've spoken to said, I don't mind a flippy cooks in the kitchen but I don't want a robot in the front of the house. Well guess what I do? Because I don't want to phone Rose Taxi or Maxi Taxi when I need a cab, I just want to push a button and Uber comes. Why is this all happening? I'm going to speak to this very quickly because I think we kind of know this, but just remember 150 years ago, I'm talking about sort of almost the sort of people who are still only now have passed on. Pony Express. World War I, they were still poking each other with bayonets. There was no radio. If you look at this graph, and I think we maybe are familiar with the principle of linearity versus exponential, Things went very slowly for a very long period of time. The agricultural revolution happened nine, in minus 9,000. It took a long time before we got pottery. 3,000 years to get to making stuff out of clay. Do you know that when Henry Ford made the Model T Ford, that car didn't change for 27 years. It was exactly the same. So all you had to do was optimize and make lean and efficiency and scale efficiency, which was mass production. That's passe now. Winning through efficiency is 20th century. That's what we used to do. Now we have to win through learning. And learning is about what happens in approximately the 2000s. And then suddenly something very peculiar happens. And it looks like it all happens at once. And that's where we are now. And that's why things are getting completely outrageous. And why, to Martin's point, what is happening now is just simply not the same as what has happened before. And that's what you see when Elon Musk, who we all obviously know and admire, although we wonder why the hell he's doing it there, not here. But what he did there is renewable energy, automotive, space, batteries, solar, uh, his new company Neuralink, which is trying to create a device that links the human brain to artificial intelligence. He is doing so many different things across so many different fields, it's like the modern day Da Vinci. And what he is doing is basically he's working on this exponential curve where it all happens at once. In about 2009, one company hit a billion dollar valuation in a year. 
by the time you get into 2016, 2017, we can't even read the numbers of companies who are using these technologies. And also the shift in consciousness, this mindset, to create things that are so vastly extraordinary that they're reaching billion dollar valuations in one year. I like this list very much because let me also say to you that I truly, truly don't believe that this is a technology issue only. This is an issue of human consciousness. This is about redefining what it means to be on the planet. So Elon Musk has these 11 drivers. It's not about the technology, it's about the approach, it's about the attitude, it's about an openness to change. And if we're asking ourselves the question, are we ready? then the answer for me, or rather the, the route to the answer, is to have a look at this list and say, does this look like our national agenda? Do we drive innovation? Do we inspire greatness? Do we act despite fear? Are we customer-centric or are businesses product-centric? We have policies in South Africa which drive job creation. From a personal point of view, I can only get behind that because I'm absolutely terrified of what the implication is going to be in terms of job loss and the terrible strife and crisis, the devastation I believe we're actually about to face. You cannot drive job creation together with innovation, automation and AI. They are antagonistic forces. And if you are being incentivized by government to set up businesses proving that you are creating jobs, you are almost exactly being asked to not automate. China has declared that by 2030, it intends to be the world superpower for artificial intelligence. That's in 11 and a half years' time. When you say that and you put policy in place and you put hundreds, hundreds of millions, billions of dollars funding institutes, research institutes, changing the curriculums at schools, and actually getting behind that statement, because you know the inevitability that whoever wins in the AI race wins, then that's what it looks like when you're beginning to ready yourself for the fourth industrial revolution. Where are we in terms of our policy and our outlook and the kids, our kids that we're still sending to school, go into the average school in South Africa today and it will look exactly like it did 400 years ago. You'll be able to say, oh yes, that's a school. Here's a small list of companies that no longer require a degree as an entry requir requirement to work there. How many of our kids are we sending to university in the hope that that will help them get a better life, a life better than we've had? In South Africa, half of our execs think that at least 20% of the current job roles will cease to exist in five years' time. We know that 35% of all jobs are at risk of automation in South Africa, 35%. Having said that, 25% of our labor force can't find a job. 65% of people who are unemployed have been so for more than one year. And 71% of those people are between 15 and 34, and 44% of unemployed people have never worked before. 78% of our nine-year-olds are functionally illiterate. Michael Yodan tweeted this yesterday. It's, a, it's an image that describes data traffic per smartphone and its growth across regions. So you can see in North America, the absolute skyrocket, the prediction in 2022, how much data per mobile phone, because data is cheap. You can see in the Middle East and Africa that we've got a very, very short little column, because data is expensive. Just a few statistics internationally. I'm not saying we're South Korea. I'm not saying we're China or India or Bangladesh or, or, or Kenya. But it is interesting to note what's going on globally. South Korea, by 2016, had installed 631 industrial robots. The US only had 189. By 2020, China's Ministry of Education plans to put half of the South African population by number into vocational training around the fourth industrial revolution. This was an article from Wired magazine. It talks extensively, very interesting, about how they're treating education in order to achieve this. I see nothing like this happening in South Africa. Having said that, let me make clear, there are pockets of extraordinary excellence. So I'm not saying that no one is doing anything. There are governmental programs, there are private programs. It looks like if you want to do it, you have to go somewhere else. What a horrific and terrible state of affairs. I hope we stay, I hope we change that, I hope we do what we need to do each and every one of us, 
And uh, I'll leave you with this quote, which I very strongly hold to be true. Oprah Winfrey. When the time comes to bet on yourself, I hope you double down. Thank you very much. Thank you.